A high school teacher accidentally revealed that Santa isn't real to a 10th grader. The teacher posted to Reddit where she asked if she was wrong for assuming that all of her sophomore students knew that Santa Claus wasn't real. She was discussing the book Animal Farm with her students and in a discussion around propaganda, she was explaining critical thinking skills and used the example that children believe in Santa but later develop critical thinking skills and figure out that he's not real. However, one of her students piped up saying, wait, what? Santa's not real? And she appeared upset for the rest of the class. Now this teacher is wondering if she accidentally ruined this girl's childhood. Many Redditors were skeptical, believing that this girl was simply messing with her teacher. However, others shared their own stories of spoiling the truth about Santa for kids who they assumed were far past the age of still believing. It's not out of the question for a teenager to still believe, especially if they are clinging to the nostalgia of fond childhood memories. According to a poll conducted by Made for Moms, the average age that most parents reveal the truth about Santa to their kids is about 8 years old. By the age of 10, more than 80% of children know the truth. While there's no fine print that says when a child should stop believing, believing in Santa, you may want to have a conversation with your teenager, just to spare them some embarrassment when they reach high school because by then most of their peers know the truth. When did you stop believing in Santa Claus? A teacher on TikTok detailed why school start times are way too early and research agrees. Teacher and comedian Devin Siebold said that school start times are way too early, especially for high school students, and that we are pushing against science. Pre-pandemic research from school districts shows that 8 a.m. is the average start time for high schools across the United States, with almost 42% of schools starting even earlier than that. School districts with later start times are more likely to rank higher in education based on attendance, GPAs, and test scores. That's because, simply, students are getting more sleep, leading them to feeling more energized, happier, and healthier at school. Research also shows that later start times improve mental and physical health. Studies show that both teenage driving and bus accidents decrease when starting times trend later. Students also don't have to wait for the bus in the dark hours of the morning, putting them in a less vulnerable state. Later start times also reduce risk of injury for student athletes, who have better energy levels and physical wellness as they get more high-quality sleep. So why aren't schools starting later already? The simple answer? Routines. Their stress and schedule and it would require a great deal of organizing for parents. Critics of shifting start times argue students will just stay up later, but research on teenager circadian rhythms shows that's actually a good thing. Sleep expert Laura Sterney explained that it's difficult for teens to fall asleep before 11 p.m. The research is clear. Later start times are a benefit to students, especially teenagers. What was your school start time? Or, if you're still in school, what time does school start for you? A dad called out school perfect attendance awards for contributing to burnout. The dad, who goes by at speech prof on TikTok, criticized the absurdity of these awards as something out of a kid's control. He realizes that it all comes down to funding, and an article from the Washington Post in March 2021 confirms this. In order to receive higher ratings and secure funding and enrollment, school districts must incentivize attendance. This means encouraging sick kids to come to school and also relieves the burden of childcare for parents. Some would call this a win-win, at the expense of the student. But hey, they get an award, right? At Speech Prof wonders about the lessons that perfect attendance awards are conveying to kids. Is it that they should feel guilty for getting sick? Rewarding attendance also reinforces a mentality in children to prioritize work over their well-being. And outside of this mentality, attendance awards are inherently biased toward privileged students. What about students with chronic health struggles, those with developmental disabilities, or students facing difficult life events? The Washington Post article pointed out that encouraging students to push through illnesses and be at school can actually be dangerous to vulnerable classmates. And the solution? It's right in front of us in the form of remote learning for students who have to miss school, rather than incentivizing sick students to be present. Did you ever receive a perfect attendance award? And what do you think of students being rewarded for their attendance? A language arts teacher is considering quitting her job because her 10th grade students don't know how to read. The New Jersey-based teacher shared in her Reddit post that the last couple of years have been very stressful, but the straw that broke the camel's back was realizing that her 10th grade students couldn't read at grade level. In fact, they could barely read at all. They were reading second and third grade level books like Charlotte's Web and Bridge to Terabithia. She turned to other teachers at her school for advice, but it turns out they were dealing with the same thing. In desperation, this teacher said, I'm at a loss. Parents are mad that their kids are failing, but there's not much she can do, especially when it comes to student behavior, because students are rude, always on their phones, and destructive. She believes the issue is students lacking the desire to learn and a system and country that doesn't believe in education. For years, other countries have been outperforming 
reforming the U.S. education system. Author and parenting expert John Fogel said on TikTok that school in the United States is not set up with kids in mind. The country with the global reputation for having the best education model is Finland, and it's because they put their kids first. They don't teach to tests. Teachers are given carte blanche to actually teach. Not only that, there's no homework, the school day is shorter, and there are more breaks during the day. We're to a point where the entire education system in the U.S. needs to be revamped in order for teachers and students to succeed. The kids are getting lost in the mix and teachers suffer the collateral damage. It may seem like options are limited for parents in our current system, but parents can get involved. Vote in school board elections, get involved in state government, and join the PTA. And most importantly, do whatever you can to advocate for your kids and support your teachers. Teachers. A teacher spent a whole 10 minutes on a fun classroom activity and a parent demanded an apology. As a reward for great test scores, this teacher had asked her class to spend a little bit of time coming up with a name for her new puppy. The teacher posted to Reddit where she shared that her class had worked hard and gotten their test score average up by 25 points. So during the next class period, the students spent 10 minutes coming up with and voting on a name for the new puppy. They settled on the name Steve Austin, the German Shepherd. The teacher thought everyone was happy, but one parent emailed saying that it was inappropriate and irrelevant to the math class and called it a waste of time, demanding an apology. It left this teacher wondering if she'd done something inappropriate. Brain breaks are essential during the school day to keep students happy, motivated, and productive, no matter their age. After naming the pup, the teacher felt as though her class was in better spirits and they bonded over naming the dog together. Research suggests that student-teacher relationships are important for the well-being of students. According to the American Psychological Association, students who have positive and supportive relationships with their teachers attain higher levels of achievement than students with more conflict in the classroom. Given the evidence on the importance of breaks and the success this teacher had with her students' test scores, it seems as though this teacher is doing a fine job. If motivating students via lighthearted bribery with a cute puppy is wrong, I don't want to be right. A teacher was called into the principal's office after refusing to give her personal address to a student's parents. The teacher posted to Reddit sharing that she has one boundary that she's created to separate work from home, and that's never sharing her personal address. These parents wanted to send the teacher a graduation announcement, which the teacher says she welcomed because she thinks their kid is amazing. She told them to just send it to the school and she would get it. But the parents pushed back, saying it felt like she was calling them a stalker or some kind of danger. They continued to request her information, and the teacher continued to politely decline. But the parents were still upset and called a meeting with the principal and this teacher. When the principal found out what was going on, they backed the teacher up and told the parents that she wasn't mandated to give out personal information to anyone. This teacher has a right to privacy and was validly concerned for her safety. Sure, these parents probably weren't a risk, but this information in the wrong hands could put the teacher at risk as everyday teachers enter schools and classrooms that are undoubtedly unsafe. This teacher also deserves to keep her home separate from her work. It's a boundary that's incredibly important for her health, well-being, and safety. What do you think? Should a teacher be required to give up her home address? An Ohio elementary school sparked outrage when they announced Ice Cream Fridays. The school published a post to Facebook that was then shared to Twitter that said that any student with a negative lunch balance couldn't participate in the ice cream event even if they brought their own money to pay for their treat. People were floored at the lack of inclusivity in the event, finding it hard to believe that an elementary school would exclude kids that didn't have the means to keep their account flush with funds. Ms. Jade Soul Food from Middleton, Ohio stepped up and took action, paying off all negative lunch balances so that no child would be left out. And MSR Transportation LLC in Monroe, Ohio donated an additional $5,000 so that no lunch balances would fall behind again and students could always participate in future ice cream Fridays. Leaving kids out can be detrimental to a growing child's psyche. Being left out can cause issues like anxiety, depression, and embarrassment. Not to mention the fact that school lunch payments are usually beyond a child's control, especially in elementary school. With the rising costs of, well, every Everything these days, it's no surprise that some parents have a harder time keeping up with payments on lunch balances. No reward system should be tied to budgetary constraints. And thank goodness for heroes like those who are willing to sacrifice their own money to put smiles on the faces of some kids. When a teacher unexpectedly started her period during class, while wearing white pants, of course, she decided to turn it into a learning moment for her students. 
The Australian primary teacher, who goes by Emily Elizabeth on TikTok, works with 10 and 11-year-old students and noticed some of the girls distractedly chatting. One of the girls informed Miss Emily that she thinks she might have gotten her period. And while Emily Elizabeth wasn't thrilled with the news, she decided to normalize what had happened to her and set the tone for how students should react when it happens to them. She calmly thanked her student, said that she had a spare change of clothes in the office, and excused herself to go change her pants. When she got back to class, she thanked them again and informed them that that it was all very normal. Periods are completely normal, as Emily Elizabeth pointed out to her class, but there's still serious stigma surrounding them. A 2021 study found that 76% of students say there is a negative association that periods are gross and unsanitary, and 70% say the school environment makes them especially self-conscious of their periods. By being open about the reality of getting her period and refusing to be embarrassed, Emily Elizabeth is contributing to a safe space where students can express themselves without fear of judgment. A dad added a note to his daughter's lunchbox after the lunch lady got a little too nosy. Apparently, the lunch ladies were calling out kids who had sweet treats in their lunchboxes, and dad, Ross Hunt, decided that these school employees needed to mind their own business. Hunt printed out a label with an important message to the lunch lady stating that the parents knew what was in the box and that Isabel was allowed to eat whatever she wants. He did decide against a second label with some, let's call it less savory language. He shared what was in her lunchbox in a follow-up video, which contained a variety of foods, including a sandwich, fruit, carrots, crisps, and a chocolate egg. Other parents related to Hunt's experience and praised him for sticking up for his daughter. While it is important for children to have a healthy and balanced diet, having sweet treats in moderation isn't the end of the world. And in fact, restricting children and adults from eating certain foods actually does more harm than good. Labeling certain foods as bad and good can lead to feelings of guilt and shame, and can set up unhealthy attitudes and behaviors when it comes to eating. Even if these lunch ladies don't eat certain foods, other people, including children in their cafeteria, have a right to eat and enjoy them as they please. After all, we are more focused and alert with the full belly rather than an empty one. Remember being a kid at a recital or award ceremony and scanning the crowd to see who came to support you? TikTok creator Chris Bautista posted a video reminding parents how important it is to be there for their kids. In the video, he's reacting to other videos of kids who spotted their parents in the crowd. And he was left in tears, saying he never had that experience. In the comments, many TikTokers commiserated, saying that they were also left disappointed. It may not seem like a big deal, but research proves that parental involvement at school, including events like performances, is vital to a child's well-being. It's not feasible for every parent to show up to every event. I mean, there are jobs and other responsibilities. But there are other ways that parents can show up and be involved in their kids' educations. At home parental involvement, like reading and discussing school, is equally important. Whether or not you can be there physically, it's important for parents to let their kids know that they're there for them emotionally, supporting them every step of the way. But if you can be there, do it. Even if it doesn't seem like it matters much in the grand scheme of things, it matters a lot to the child who sees their parents supporting them. What is up with high school dress codes? A teenage student who goes by the name at Elise Cork on TikTok showed off the fairly conservative outfits that got her slapped with dress code violations. It begs the question, what are they even allowing students to wear if this is deemed inappropriate? The comments on the video were all in agreement that these outfits are totally suitable for school and that they should not be impeding her access to education. Oh my god, eyelets on her shirt? The scandal! Court clarified in another video what exactly was wrong with each outfit and mentioned that it was the same female teacher at her public school dress coding her each time. Even teachers chimed in on her video defending Cork and saying that it was not fair for her to be treated this way. One teacher even commented, I want to recognize on behalf of educators that what students wear to school widely does not matter. Dress codes often target female students saying that boys will be distracted by girls' bodies. And infractions remove them from the classroom, where they should be getting an education, not getting reprimanded for showing a shoulder. Cork no longer attends the school in question, which updated its dress code in 2023, and now appears to meet the ACLU guidelines, which aim to prevent discrimination and sexism in the classroom. A teacher in Texas made headlines for banning homework. 
A few years back, Brandy Young, a Texas second grade teacher, enforced a no homework policy in her classroom. Having given out homework in the past, she had come to an important realization that it did more harm than good after students were burnt out from a long day at school. Young argued that her research had been unable to prove that homework improves student performance. And she's correct. Research has been finding these same conclusions for decades, that there's no correlation between homework and academic achievement in elementary school students. In fact, lesser no homework has multiple multiple positive effects on students, including reduced stress, improved sleep, more time spent with family and engaging in social activities, and enhanced learning skills in the classroom. Instead of homework, Young encouraged her students to do activities that are correlated with student success, like eating dinner as a family, reading together, playing outside, and getting your child to bed early. We think this teacher may be onto something good. What do you think about this no homework policy?